Hi everyone and we are live here on Instagram and at the same time we are recording for YouTube and welcome to today's live Q&A session. Good, then I would say without further ado, let's start with the first question. So one question that I received up front was what kind of databases do we use in management consulting? And I think, you know, it's hard to, to make a general answer because it obviously uh, highly depends on what kind of data you want to um, uh, retrieve. Usually um, if uh, we talk about strategy consulting, I use many databases. Um, if I am looking for more qualitative data, I'm typically using Factiva. So this is a platform where you get a lot of qualitative information through articles, um, you know, um, reports and so on. Also, what I really like is, um, is of course, uh, merger markets. This is a good platform if we talk about, um, if we talk about, uh, you know, M&A data. Uh, and so on. Um, obviously also Capital IQ is a very uh, heavily used um, database where you can retrieve financial data. Okay, so those are probably the three most common that I use and um, highly depending, you know, if I need some more macro uh, economic data then I use other databases. So it highly depends on the use case, but I would say like uh, Factiva, the merger markets and Capital IQ are probably the, the most um, uh, fre uh, frequent ones that I use personally in my daily work as a strategy consultant. Then Alexander asks, how is the application process in consulting, for example, at Stern Stewart? How does the process differ when applying for a consultant job and an internship? Good question. So um, the process across all those firms um, obviously varies from uh, uh, firm to firm a little bit, but I would say in general, it's always more or less the same. So you hand in your application um, to um, the recruiting service, it's usually, you know, a, a central email address where you send your application to, then they screen. Then, you know, if you pass all the criteria that they are screening for, then you get an invitation and then you have your interview days. Okay. And I say interview days because it highly depends. Sometimes you have interviews in one day, sometimes you have it in two days because you, you're asking about the differences between internship and, uh, and you know, um, as a new hire. I would say uh, if you do an internship, you typically, at least in strategy consulting, have, I would say, between three and four interviews. So this is usually you start maybe, let's say, the interview day is on Friday. Then it's typically from Friday morning until, I would say, Friday noon or maybe in the early afternoon. Okay, And this means that you have like three to four interviews and then you get the offer or don't get the offer. If you start as a full-time or if you want to start as a full-time position, then typically the interviews are longer. Then you have either the entire day. Some firms do it that you have from the morning until noon that you have the first round of interviews. Then you get a message or an information if you um, get to the next round. And this is either on the afternoon or maybe on a separate day. Okay, so there are several uh, different models that consultancies use. But this is what I uh, would say is the general process. And if we talk about the interviews, there are always, uh, you know, the same parts. So you have partly, um, you have personal interviews. This is where you just, um, or where the firm tries to find out if you are, you know, from a um, personality perspective, the right person to join consulting and also to join the firm because every firm has different cultures. Okay. So this is the personal interview part. Then you uh, also very often have brain teasers. This could be, you know, calculation exercises or uh, small riddles. Or you have, uh, and this is the third part, you have the case studies and this is typically, you know, probably heard of that, uh, the most uh, famous part in the consulting interviews because this is a very unique kind of uh, assessment. Okay, so those are the three parts and it varies from firm to firm how they structure these parts. Okay, some uh, firms have more personal interviews. Some have, you know, more cases. If we talk about cases, this could be a group case. This could be, you know, a case that you do on your own, maybe a case that you do uh, with a consultant together. So it highly depends. And this is where all the firms uh, have the difference. But this is in general um, how, the, um, how the process uh, works. And there's no big difference between um, uh, internship applications and um, uh, applications for um, um, a full-time position. The only difference is that, you know, internship uh, applications are in the interview days are typically much shorter than if you apply uh, as a uh, full-time consultant. 
Next question, how do smaller consulting companies compete with the likes uh, of the big four? So the question is, how do uh, small companies compete against big companies? Well, it highly depends. Um, so you have to understand that consulting um, is a, uh, a net or a people's business, okay? So it doesn't, most people do not really care if the brand or if the consultants come from, uh, let's say KPMG or Deloitte um, or any other um, um, advisory firm, okay? So if you have a good network, I think, you know, this is a, a huge part of your market success. And this obviously need, means that you need to build relationships, that you need to build a brand for yourself. And um, this can really, really help. So network is one competing factor. The other one is your expertise. So maybe as a smaller consultancy, um, it's a good decision to really, you know, go into a niche, okay? So where you uh, really try to build some uh, expertise, uh, where you try to develop some specialization, that you try to, uh, you know, do projects in a topic where other companies um, are not yet or are not very strong at, okay? And this is, I would say, the, the second part that you can do. And um, yeah, I think those are the two ways, okay? You either build a network or you um, have a certain expertise that others don't offer. And you know, you will be surprised. I mean, if you, you take a look at the consulting market, um, you know, like 80% uh, of the consultants are independent contractors. So this means that, you know, all the big consulting firms we always talk about, they only are very, very small percentage of the entire consulting market, you know, because most consultants do operate uh, as solo consultants. And this obviously um, illustrates that it's very, very uh, feasible to compete against those big brands if you have a certain expertise or if you have um, have a, a kind of exp um, a, a good network that will help you to um, sell your projects and sell your people. Okay, so that's uh, my take on that. <clears throat> how to approach consulting firms with little or no consulting background. Um, so this depends on where you are at the moment. So are you still studying or are you, do you already have some uh, professional experience? You know, you have to check for the criteria, okay? So every consulting firm has a different, or, you know, they have the same criteria, but, you know, um, a different focus. So if you want to join the strategy sector, for example, they typically want to have, you know, top-notch academic results. Also, you need relevant practical experience. If you go for uh, the big four, uh, for example, then, you know, you still need good academic results, but you don't have to be like top 5% uh, or so. And um, there, you know, in terms of practical experience, it's also, you know, a bit easier if you don't have that much experience. So the first question is what kind of firm you want to join or what kind of sector you want to join? Are we talking about strategy consulting? Are we talking about big four? Or maybe you are talking about a, um, a specialized consulting or tech consulting, okay? So this is the first question. And after that, I would uh, um, reflect on the criteria that they are asking for. And if you fulfill those criteria, I think, you know, you just um, uh, uh, talk to them and uh, just try to get into the process. And if you don't find uh, fulfill the criteria, then it's really important that you um, kind of think about, okay, how can you compensate for your weaknesses? How can you build the skills and um, the profile that you need to join um, those firms? That's how I would do it. Okay. So those are the three steps that I would recommend. How many people are normally on a consulting team? Um, this highly depends um, on the type of project. If we talk about strategy consulting, um, so McKinsey, BCG and so on, then we typically have, I would say on average, maybe five people on a project. But you also have projects where you only have uh, two consultants, uh, but you also have strategy projects where you have 10 to 15 consultants. But this is the kind of range that I would see, okay? If we talk about, you know, um, the big four or uh, tech um, consulting like Accenture, for example, then typically the project um, teams are much larger, okay? Because those are um, uh, larger, you know, larger projects because, you know, the, the fee and the daily fee that they charge in uh, for the big four and Accenture is lower than for a McKinsey, for example. And this means that they can sell more people for the same price, okay? And there, I mean, there are project sizes of, you know, 20 to 50 people, even this is uh, possible. So I would say in strategy consulting, it's like, you know, let's say three to 10 and in, um, uh, in uh, you know, uh, the big four and uh, tech consulting, it's maybe 10 to, let's say 30, okay? This is the range I would, I would say. What is the best book on building your own consulting company? Um, it's a book from Ellen Weiss. Uh, it's called A Million Dollar Consulting, I think. Um, let me check. Million dollar. 
put something. Um, this is a book that I highly recommend. Um, yeah, it's called A Million Dollar Consulting by Ellen Weiss. And um, this is a book that I highly recommend. Um, it's not only for people who want to build their own company, but it's also for people uh, who are a project manager, maybe want to uh, want to become partner, because this has a really entrepreneurial approach on uh, the consulting industry. Okay, so it doesn't talk about skills like you know uh, building, uh, building presentations or working in Excel or so, but it has a strong focus on how to position the market, how to acquire um, uh, clients. And how to build uh, your company okay so that's that's what i would recommend what's the best uh, book or the best way to build a network um in terms of network i think it's um so first of all you need to have a clear goal okay you cannot network without having a clear goal so you don't want to waste your time by you know just randomly meeting people and just trying to you know hang out with them without having a clear goal so you first of all need to define okay who do you want to network, uh, network with? Okay, this could be maybe um, uh, your, your potential clients. This could be you know potential experts. This could be you know just people that you find to be inter interesting. So really sit down and think about okay, who do you want to network with? Okay, this is step number one. The second step is that you think about okay, where can I find those people? Okay, nowadays it's very easy. You can find them online, but maybe you know you also um, find them. Um, they, um, on network events, for example, this is also um, a, a, a possibility. Or you know, at uh, um, I don't know, maybe uh, you find them in certain circles. Okay, so maybe you join your wine circle uh, in, in your city or the golf club. I don't know. Okay, so you have to find out where those people typically hang around. And then the third step is that when you finally meet them, that you kind of, you know, appear to be interesting. So you need to give them a reason to network with you. Okay. So don't think about like, okay, this is a potential client. Okay. And I just want to have uh, his card uh, to get his number. Okay. So think about what kind of value can you bring to them? Okay. What do they, uh, how could you help them? And um, this is the first step to get in contact with them and, you know, kind of, you know, make them interested in you. And then last but not least, the fourth step, and this is obviously the most important one, is to really try to keep contact. Okay. And this is like something, you know, that you build over years. Building a network is nothing that happens like in a short time period. It really is something that, you know, uh, takes time. And, you know, the people, the best networkers that I know, they build their network over years. Okay, sometimes even over decades. Okay, so the fourth step is really important. Okay, so just to summarize, first of all, uh, uh, really define who your target group is. Second, uh, think about where you can find those people. Third, give them a reason to get in uh, touch with you. Uh, so uh, kind of think about, okay, how can you help them? And fourth is that you, um, you know, keep the contact in a long time period. What are the most exciting projects for you? Um, I think the most exciting projects are the ones where you have the steepest learning curve and this always highly depends on where you are at the moment. Okay, so at the beginning I really like, you know, projects where I saw many different places where I, you know, had to do many different tasks. Okay, so this was what I liked at the beginning. And now it's more for me, you know, I have a certain focus or I want to develop a certain focus. So I really like those projects that help me to develop those expertise. Okay, but I think it highly depends on what you or where you are. Okay, and what you're interested in. So I would always try to look for projects that um, you know contribute to your learning curve. Okay, I think this is the very most important. And once you get to a point where you say, okay, I don't learn anything and you here on this project, then it's time to to uh, ask to you know uh, change the project. And this is certainly something that I did um, back then when I realized, okay, my I don't, you know, my learning curve is flattened, flattening. Then I decided to uh, switch projects. What is it like for a fresher straight out of college in terms of difficulty in solving real world business problems? Um, you know, the thing about problem solving is that you don't need a lot or a, a so you don't need a certain expertise. Okay, so the strength of different consultancies uh, is not that they have a certain expertise, it's rather that they have a structured problem solving approach. Okay, so the strength or the real strength of a consultant is that they are really strong in the problem solving process. Okay, 
So I think as a fresher, uh, you know, what I would do is that I really try to, would try to read about problem solving. Um, so there are many books about it. Uh, I just recently uploaded a book review on YouTube, uh, Cracked It, it's called. And uh, also the McKinsey Way is a good book for problem solving. So I would really try to understand how um, problem solving works. Okay. And then I would really focus on the methodology. And that's what I would do, okay? And then you just need experience. Um, but obviously, you know, if we talk about a consulting context, um, at the beginning, if you join those large firms, then you typically um, will focus more on, you know, the operational part. So you will be more involved in um, like, you know, preparing presentations, working on Excel models, etc. And then, you know, with some experience, I would say, you know, as a senior consultant or manager, a project manager, then you slowly start to be responsible for the problem solving process itself. Okay. So it typically takes some time. But, you know, for example, if you are, um, if you're a fresher straight out of college and want to found your own consultancy, and there are many people who do that, then, you know, I would just focus on the problem solving process and, you know, um, just focus on, uh, on that. Good. Then if you don't have any more questions, then I want to thank you for your time. As always, it was a pleasure. If you have more questions, then just write them uh, on Instagram as a DM. So with that being said, have a great and have a successful day. Hope to talk to you soon. Goodbye, Johannes.